Yo, what's poppin' guys, welcome back to another Scratch tutorial where today I'm going to be showing you how to take your games and put them on Itch.io. Um, when you put them on Itch.io, since they'll be converted to an HTML file, they will run a lot smoother, a lot faster, can allow them to run at 60 FPS, and can also then allow your projects to have infinite clones and infinite list. So, let's get right into it. Let's say, for example, that I have my project. I'm just going to use this, our Five Nights at Freddy's tutorial as an example so basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna come up here and you're gonna take the code the numbers right here see how oh, minus five two four four two four seven one two you grab whatever your number is control C to copy or right click and click copy uh, you'll come to this link sheep tested I could slash HTML fire I'll leave a link in the description so you can go and uh, check it out then what you're going to do is you're going to first of all in this project ID bar you're going to go ahead and paste the numbers that you just got or if you downloaded the file which you can do by coming into your project coming to file and clicking save to your computer it will then save a scratch file and you can upload it there or you can just full on take this entire URL. you can take the entire URL from the project page make sure it's not the editor or just take the editor off at the end so you'll come to here you just take this whole link and put it there I like to do the ID that's just what I've always done doesn't change anything regardless of how you do that you can change the project name that way if it's running you can you know see what the name of it's called so I'd name it maybe um, what was what was the name of my game five nights at uglies I think yeah five nights at uglies so I could name it five nights at uglies username value now since we're not in scratch it physically cannot detect a username right you know how in scratch when you come into your project and you can come to settings and you'll see that there's this uh, username block that when clicked or whenever broadcasted will you know say your username if you're not in scratch you can't do that so you're going to want to set up a default name that will do it anyways for example for all of my games it's I always set it to Deku's tester even though my games never even show it I always set it to that just in case because why not you are you're gonna want compatibility mode on I like it you don't need it I prefer it Enable turbo mode. This will consistently have turbo mode on. It will not be able to be shut off. Background colors. I don't touch this stuff. I don't touch these things. Uh, if you want a loading image, like if well, like while the game is loading up, you can go ahead and insert that here or put the URL. I'd much rather just put the file. It'd be a lot easier. Trust me. Uh, start project immediately on load. I like that on. That means you'll no have to. You, the no green flag will ever happen. It'll just be the second your project loads. Bam, you're playing it. Full screen button, I like to have that on, so therefore you can full screen zoom in all the way. Show a start stop button, show your green flag button, I don't like to do that. Stretch to stage fit, I don't do that, just so any, just so like your arc doesn't get all warped and distorted. Um, stretch the loading image, again this is only if you're using a loading image, I don't so I'm not going to touch it. We have maintain aspect ratio, that is on so it can keep scratches normal 480 by 360 canvas again this is to make sure that your art doesn't stretch and warp and distort i'll put a zip file i don't do it because it's not necessary if you want a zip file of your game you can go right ahead and do that it will basically just allow you to see all your stuff and now here's the settings for your mouse pointer do you want to use the default mouse pointer? You can. If you want to have your default, if you want to have your mouse pointer hidden, you can. Why would you want that? Let's say, for example, that your scratch game has, you know, a custom cursor. It hide the cursor, do that for you. Oh, wait a minute. This does it for you. You can get, you can choose custom cursor, and then upload a file 32 by 32 of this cursor that you want, or you can just always use the default one. Doesn't matter. Lock the pointer on the click. The mouse XY blocks are, will report the accumulative mouse position, all that good stuff. I don't touch it. You don't need to. It's not necessary. Monitor style. This is how this will make your like variables and stuff look nicer. Like use the custom variable monitor color, which is this uh, yellow right here. So if unchecked, the translucent block, the translucent black will be used. I like the translucent black, so I don't I don't tick it. If you look at the two games that I have posted and you see variables, they look like uh, that translucent black because I think it looks nice. Um, or you can go ahead and, you know, change it to literally whatever you whatever color you want it to be. Uh, I'm not going to do that, though. Hide the monitoring uh, background boxes, colors. I'm not going to do that. 
Save cloud variables locally on storage. Now, since we obviously can't cannot access Scratch's cloud's server base, we're going to have to find a way to put it. So uh, we use a local storage on your computer to house high scores and stuff. Or you can set up your own custom server somewhere on the internet. I don't know how to do that. I'm not in any way an expert on that, and I'm not going to be getting into that. If you know what to do here, go ahead and check it out. I'm sure there's a tutorial somewhere where you can figure out how to set this up. I'm just going to keep it as save cloud variables using locally, using local storage. Works just fine. Works perfectly normally. And here's these modded options that I really like. You can change the file size. If you're going to make it bigger, okay, I'd make sure you duplicate this size. So instead of 480, you do 920, 360. I think what that's not how you do math. You know how to do math. Just double these numbers if you want to actually make it bigger. There's really no reason to. Trust me, when you see it in itch.io, you realize you won't even need to have it bigger because there's, you know, you have the full screen button, so you're fine. Um, not 100% sure what this one is, so I'm not going to even touch it. Remove limits such as clone and list length limits. Click that on regardless. It's just nice to have. Unless you have nothing unless your entire game has nothing to do with clones or lists, then then untick it. But I mean, if you're messing with clones such as my game Silent Night, tick that on because there should be little to no lagging at all. And then once you're done setting up all of your settings for your game, you're going to hit this HTMLify button and it'll load this up. Depending on how big the project is, it could take a really long time. Once it's done, don't even click this download button because chances are if you have this download automatically ticked, it'll download it for you. Otherwise, if you have it unticked, you have to click download and then it'll download. You'll see you have the name of your file in a Google Chrome tab or it might be, you know, whatever browser you're using. I use Chrome because, you know, normal person things. Then you're going to come over to, after you're done with that and you have your file, you're going to come to itch.io. If you haven't already logged into your account, definitely do so. And you can come to here, you see my two games, I have Silent Night and Five Nights of Insanity. You can go ahead and we're going to hit Edit Profile. Once you're logged in and all that good kind of stuff. I don't even know what I'm doing right now. Uh, so we're going to uh, see this little arrow right here, we're going to click on that and then we're going to click Upload New Project. When you upload the new project, you're going to put in the name Five Nights of, no, Five Nights at Uglies is the name of this game. Then you can set up what the URL looks like. It'll be HTTPS colon backslash backslash your name, itch.io, and then the name of it. You can change this if you want. I don't find it necessary. If you want to make it something else, go right ahead. Uh, add yourself a short, a short description. Not necessary if you want to give yourself a very, very brief description of what your thing is about. For maybe example, a FNAF fan game. There, super short and brief description. What what is it? Is it a game? Game assets, mods, soundtracks, comics. Chance start it's gonna be games, but I don't know what you're up to. Now, kind of projects. You could have it downloadable. Keep in mind that you are running an HTML file, so there's no reason to make it downloadable. So don't do that. Just leave it as downloadable because we're gonna set up a different thing down here in a little bit. So just leave it as downloadable for now. If you want to go mess around with it, you definitely can. Release status uh, to show like if you're going to be continuing updating it. If you're not working on it for the time being, but you will come back to it. If it's canceled, you will no longer be doing updates to it. It, it could definitely be updated, but you're not going to. Uh, prototype, you know, betas, early games, and released. Come, like, you know, you, you know, it literally tells you right here what this stuff is. <laughs> Pricing, you can do zero donut. You can set it up to so people have to pay, or you can just do no payments whatsoever. Uh, I always set it at zero or, do or donate unless I'm super, super proud of the game, which I've never had a game like that before. I mean, I'm like really proud of Silent Night, but I don't think people need to be paying money for it. If they want to donate, definitely go right ahead there. But again, you can set a how much um, it can be. So just leave it at zero or donate. Then you get to this upload file. You click the upload file. You can't actually see it. Um, I have my uh, file manager showed up. Just double click on that. Uh, Chrome file or your HTML document that we just made in this HTML file, and then it'll start loading this thing up here, and it will start putting it up into this bar, and I'll be right back once it's finished uploading. All right, once it finishes up, you can go ahead and set it up like this. Uh, keep it as an executable. You can say what it's for, all if any of these things. I'll just leave it completely blank. Um, this is for more of like advanced games and. 
stuff. Yeah. Anyways, now you get to your um, th th this thing, this description. There it is. I like to put the version number, and then maybe like a story. Just basically, this is basically like your instructions and stuff. Just put that all in there, all that good stuff. Once you know that in your genre, tell us what kind of genre it is. For example, if you had a Five Nights at Freddy's ones, I'd say it's a survival game. Tags. If you want to put tags, you can go right ahead and do that. Uh, if you have any other places where it is, such as Steam, the Apple Store, all those things, go ahead and add those. Um, common noun, game, <laughs> all that good stuff. Not necessary. Download instructions. Since we're not downloading it, no need to put anything there. Uh, this is where you can discuss whether or not you want people to be able to comment. So you can either have nothing on it, only comments, or a discussion board that talks completely about this game specifically. I have like to put it on discussion board. But, uh, I don't know. Visibility. A draft. Only those who edit can see it. Um, definitely, like, you know, all this good stuff. Keep it on draft. You can go to restricted, then draft, and then choose public. Anyone can view this page. All that good stuff. And then go ahead and click save and view page. I'm not going to, though, because I'm not... This isn't a game I'm actually going to put out. So you'd get it. You'd click the save and view page and then it'd show up and then you'd have your game. And also if you want to add some cover art, you can definitely go do that. Add a trailer, add some screenshots, all that good stuff. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, then like it. And if you didn't like it, like it. Anyways, because I hope to see a bunch of your games on Itch.io. Um, yeah, that's super cool that we can do that as Scratch developers. While you're at it, want to subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my content, then help me out a lot. We are growing super, super quickly, which is just awesome. Uh, yeah, Jordan's code look in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.